America, we stand for freedom, though freedom is never really free, we yearn and strive for government, protecting our liberty. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Your Right to Know, brought to you by the Fitchburg Republican City Committee. I'll be your co-host today. My name is Andrew Kucher, and with me, as always, is Mary Lotz. And today we're going to be talking about the U.S. Constitution, giving us our, fr our freedom and our liberty. And our guest today is Hal Shirtleff. Um, he, <coughs> Hal, thank you for coming on our show. I'm honored to be here. And uh, can you tell our viewers a little bit about your background? Yes, well, uh, born, raised, and live in Boston. I'm the father of five, soon to be a granddaddy. And, Congratulations. Uh, married uh, for all 27, 26 years. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm a U.S. Army veteran, uh, served, actually, I used to go to Fort Devens on occasions yes. as we were talking about your experiences yep. there at Fort Devens. And I'm a member of the Sons of the American Revolution. Okay. And, and uh, I'm also the founder, co-founder and director of Camp Constitution. Oh, okay. Well, tell us a little <clears throat> about, a bit about Camp Constitution. Well, it's a charitable trust. We were founded in 2000. We were conceived in uh, December of 2008, and uh, we got it started in 2009. We held our first family camp in Ringe, New Hampshire, just uh, not too far from here. And as time went on, uh, we had more needs and we had more supporters. And from just running a family camp, which is really enough, mm -hmm. one week long, we started a publishing arm when it was come to our attention that certain things that we would use in our classes were out of print, uh, like Not Yours to Give, that famous Davy Crockett story. Um, uh, so we put, so I had one of our supporters said, let's start our own publishing arm. And since then we published some books. We just reprinted uh, the 19, 1828 <coughs> Catechism on the Constitution. And uh, you can go to our website and look at our camp store and see some of the other things. And then uh, a, fr a friend of mine that used to hear me as a guest on a radio show in northern Maine, uh, she, her husband were the owners of the station, so she offered us a, a spot. And we've been doing that now for about four years, Camp Constitution Radio. And, um, and then I thought there was a need to do this full time, so two, about a little more than two years ago, I um, left the job I've been for, the, for many years and became the, the full-time director of Camp Constitution. Wow. So in addition to the ca family camp that we run, and this year's camp is in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. July 28th to August 3rd. You know, I'll, in fact, this, um, uh, this weekend I'm at the homeschool show down in uh, Worcester, the Mass Hope Homeschool Show. So I travel around the region giving presentations on various topics and uh, getting on radio shows. Um, I've been doing a lot of fill-in, guest hosting. You know, people are friends yes. of mine, they'll say, hey, I'm on vacation, give me the time. And, and I get on shows like, like this, and I really appreciate the opportunity to do that. And That's, we appreciate you know, the opportunity yeah. that you yeah. brought, to, brought to Fitchburg. Well, getting into, into the topic of um, the U.S. Constitutions, Republicans and conservatives, we tend to believe and fully endorse the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy as stated in the U.S. Constitution. Well, Democrats tend to think that it's more of a, a living, breathing That's document, correct. and it, it needs to be it needs to be amended. It needs to be changed over time. Um, so, what does uh, what is your theory about about the well, actual U.S. Constitution? The founders. There, are, I'm not I'm not much of a math person, but there were two fractions that I love, two thirds and three fourths, and the Electoral College. Those are three things that I think that was masterful when the founders gave us this Constitution. Mm -hmm. Two thirds, in order, in order to pass an amendment, you need two thirds of the House and Senate and three fourths of the states to approve, mm -hmm. making it very, very difficult on purpose. And, the elector and also when it comes to treaties, you need two thirds of the Senate. Mm -hmm. When they used to actually submit treaties, now they're agreements or accords, like the, this Paris Accord that mm -hmm. thankfully that Trump uh, got us out of. Uh, the Electoral College is another thing. There's a lot of people are on the impression that the president is the most powerful person in the world, and it says so in the Constitution, it doesn't say that. The president is, his, the executive branch is the second less powerful. The Supreme Court is the least powerful. Mm -hmm. Congress has most of the power. The president has specific and defined duties and responsibilities, and over the last hundred years, or maybe even longer, that particular branch has become more and more powerful. Mm -hmm. And 
Both parties have been pr promoting that. You know, a lot of this, uh, all these government regulations, uh, government organizations happened. I mean, Nixon gave us OSHA and mm -hmm. he gave us the EPA. Took us off the gold exchange. Took us off the, that's right. And then you had uh, Jimmy Carter that gave us the Department of Education as an executive, uh, as a cabinet. But every Republican president since then, including Trump, has has abided by it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, under a Republican, they're not necessarily as obnoxious, but they're still there. You know? Yeah, it, se it seems that the legislature just doesn't want to do their job, so they just say, you know what, we're going to give up this, what <clears throat> this jo our job is, and give it to the president. Give it to the president, yeah. right. And they, right. they did that numerous times with, under the Barack Obama administration. They did it numerous times, even under uh, jo uh, George, a uh, George W. Bush. W. Bush. Uh, but they seem to be a little reluctant to do that for President Trump. Well, uh, because I think they know where he might take mm -hmm. some of his executive privilege uh, in, in terms of, like, border and... Well, it's interesting, too, because uh, now I'm in favor of a secure border. Mm -hmm. I think it's constitutional. I think uh, we and most of our viewers are. are. Most of the people who probably lock their doors at night, yes. mm -hmm. you know, if they say, oh, I for open borders, so how about open doors? Or lock you their know? cars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lock their cars, you know, and what have you. But I don't think that, uh, that he had to declare a national emergency because uh, my copy of the Constitution, I don't see the term national emergency there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though they've been doing it since Woodrow Wilson. Mm -hmm. So where did it come about? Well, it came about because <coughs> the president got away with it, mm -hmm. and ever since then. But he could have simply invoked, uh, hey, I'm the commander-in-chief of, uh, of, the, of the military. We're not at war. But uh, there is an invasion going on. These mm -hmm. people that are coming here aren't just looking for jobs at McDonald's. Sure. They're here to colonize. They're causing trouble. So you could have used Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution, which talks about uh, guaranteeing states not only a Republican form of government, but keeping them from invading, uh, invasions, mm -hmm. preventing them from. So he could have said, under that, I'm building this wall. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to, uh, uh, to have a national. We, and by the way, we've been under national emergencies since the since the 70s anyway you know every time something could happen 20 miles you know on the other side of the world all of a sudden it's a national emergency mm -hmm. you know, so so why is the US Constitution and other founding documents so important to our basic uh, freedoms and liberty well what makes them so important is because it deals with human nature <coughs> technology changes populations increase but human nature does not and it kept it was a check and balance that was the most important thing it recognized a strong but limited central government with specific powers and duties, and everything else is left up to the states. We talk about the Bill of Rights, but if you read the preamble to the Bill of Rights, it's really a bill of restrictions against mm -hmm. the federal government. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Ninth and Tenth Amendments can be summed up, and if we forgot anything, you can't do that either. You right. know? Um, see, I'm a big supporter of the Second Amendment. Um, and it and you should be. And it seems like... The Second Amendment, every, everybody wants to limit the Second Amendment, uh, saying, you know, modern sporting rifles you know, mm -hmm. shouldn't be allowed, the military-type weapons. Um, back when the Constitution and the Bill of Rights was, were written, every gun was a military weapon. That's you know, right. It, it, they, it was, there was no it's difference. It's a militia. Correct. Well, Kamala Harris, as, as a candidate running for president, said her first executive order, she would give Congress mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to write the Second Amendment, and if they didn't take the proper, <laughs> the proper as defined by her, I guess, mm -hmm. um, action, <coughs> she would then do it by executive that's, order. That, that's what they call a dictatorship. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. I know Obama used to say, well, I want Congress to do what's right, but if they're not going to do it, I'll do it. Well, what, my, my question at that point would be, okay, if you're going to limit my Second Amendment to something that they would have back when the Constitution was written, muzzle loaders and, and whatnot, <laughs> uh, then I want the First Amendment restricted to only include quill pens. Quill pens, right. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, yeah. have, if you're going to write a dissertation, it has to be on a, um, it has to be done with a, a, feathered, a feathered pen. Well, the Second Amendment didn't give us the right to keep bare arms. It mm -hmm. simply per said Congress can't mess with that. Mm -hmm. And the word militia is so misunderstood today a well-regulated militia being necessary for the defense of the state, the right to keep their arms should not be infringed. We don't have a militia anymore. That's another thing that was phased out, something called the National Guard. But the National Guard is not the militia. Correct. If we had a true militia, you wouldn't need to do any recruiting because you would automatically, when the minute you turn a certain age, 16 or 18, mm -hmm. you'd know Captain or Sergeant Jones down the street. It would mm -hmm. be locally organized 
the, the Congress has control over its uh, making sure that the states have a militia ready to operate, and the militia could be used not just obviously for, it was never to be taken out of the country. It was mm -hmm. always for uh, things within the country. Right. Within the, and, and there are some examples where <coughs> governor, a governor of Vermont would refuse to send his militia out. I think it was during the War of 1812 because uh, he thought, nope, this is not constitutional. They stay in the state. Mm -hmm. But the president can call them out. But in uh, 1903, that was basically abolished to something called the Dick Act. So they, yeah. they, they, now they have something called the unorganized militia. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an oxymoron. Could you imagine if you, if, I said, if you said to me, I'm on a baseball team, but we're unorganized. I said, well, you have no team. You know? yeah, yes, exactly. You have, you have a potential team, right? right? But there's no discipline plot. and that's no practice game. and no right. drilling and no, they don't even play and catch in the backyard. You have no baseball team. Mm -hmm. So we have no militia. And that's uh, another topic I think that, that's important too. But, but the, uh, I was at the reenactment not too long ago in Lexington Green, which I videotape on a regular basis. I've so. always wanted to go to it, but I... Just pay kids, the well, kids, you know the what? kids will had, wake up early enough. I had that. 10, I had some extra passes. I get really close by, and I, give, I, I had a lot because I came up. For the first time, I was by my, usually I had children with me and friends, what have you. First time, I'm by, by myself, and I would have been happy to give you a couple of passes. I was delighted to give this pass to a couple, uh, dad and his, his little boy. Little boy had a little musket to try. It <clears throat> reminded me of my son when he was that age. He's now, my son's now 21, and he loves... Uh, his uh, Second Amendment uh, prerogatives too, but the state of state of Massachusetts has a constitution that goes. Mm -hmm. It's older than the U.S. Constitution by about seven, eight years, and it talks about the right to s defend your house. Mm -hmm. And you don't defend your house by calling nine one one and hiding mm -hmm. under the table. It was it was assumed that you were armed, mm -hmm. and they expected you were expected to be armed. If every law-abiding citizen, it was almost a duty that you were able to defend not just your home, but your community. Mm -hmm. And then you would meet on the common green and, and you would be drilled and you knew how to, the well-regulated really means that all of the units have similar instructions and similar weaponry. So of course you can, you know, you need parts and things mm -hmm. like that. But also you know how to use that stuff. So that's what it meant by regulate. It didn't mean a bunch of congressmen sitting down there writing restrictions and more laws against you. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, I oftentimes will hear from the progressives, the liberals, is that the Constitution restricts our freedoms, where I would like to believe, and I do believe, that the Constitution and the way it's written actually gives us our freedoms. Which way do you look <coughs> at that? It, it protects our God-given rights. Mm -hmm. That's what it does. It's supposed to when it's functioning properly. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not being adhered to for the most part, but it's supposed to protect those rights, not give us, as we discussed before the camera, you know, if the government gives you something, they can take it away. Mm -hmm. and, and could you just explain what we were saying before right, about we were talking what about, makes our constitution uh, Yeah, yeah uh, uh, the uh, constitution doesn't give us a right. If it did, if government gave you a right, it could take it away. Uh, and our declaration talked about rights that are inalienable un rights. Those are rights that are God-given. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you live in a secular state, and right. unfortunately they we do, they r ignore that. That's, sure. uh, that's foolishness. Yeah. So in there, in there I, I, kinda, I have fun with them. Most of the leftists, they say, oh, so we have Darwin-given rights. Darwin gives us our rights, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, you can't, he, uh, being an attorney, you can't even bring up God in a courtroom in an argument or anything like that. You're, you'd get immediately and do you still do you still take an oath? Uh, when yes, you, you still take an oath on a Bible. Uh, so help me God. My memory, yeah, it's been a while since I, I yeah. was sworn in, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have to you you get sworn in, you know. And you know what's interesting? If you look at our state constitution, it is a Christian document. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it talks about the great architect of the universe. You have an obligation. Uh, to worship the supreme being, uh, to the dictates of your conscience. It talks about morality, piety, piety and virtue being absolute uh, important when you elect, when you look for people to elect. It's a Christian document. Our Constitution, it's interesting, there's only a couple of references to it at, uh, towards the end. It talks about uh, Sundays accept it when it comes to the um, when you write it, when you when the president will uh, either sign or veto and in, uh, in the inner year of our Lord, uh, 1787. But it can only be written by people with a Christian, or you can say Judeo-Christian worldview, because um, you look at it and it says, they don't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. They don't want to give anybody too much power. Hmm, then a guy named John Calvin talk about innate depravity, you know, <laughs> in, in Vienna back in the, uh, you know, 1600s or uh, what have you. 
And that's what it was based on, you know. Mm -hmm. And Thomas Jefferson, even though he was not what you'd call a uh, what you'd call an Orthodox Christian, he was from that culture. And it was his own observations. And he said, "Do not speak, to, do not speak to me of the confidence of men, but bind them down from mischief by the chains of the Constitution." So the Constitution restricts ambitious people. And that's that was the and that doesn't change any as King Solomon said in in his proverbs that uh, that uh, nothing new under the sun. Yeah. You know, man's nature doesn't change as much as we, as much as we would like to think it does. I, it, oftentimes, people confuse the Constitution and some of the wording of the Constitution with the Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. and this concept of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And every time I, I hear many of the liberals rationalize or justify any of the social welfare type programs, and we can put Social Security in on that, mm -hmm. certainly the Affordable Care Act we can include, but they'll oftentimes say, well, you can't have a pursuit of happiness if you're fill in the blank. You don't have health care, or if you don't have proper housing, or if you don't have... So they're, they, they're folding everything under this sort of global umbrella coverage. Well, then I should have the right to Red Sox season's tickets, and the government should pay for that, because that's what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Basically, they define that. They talk a lot about that. You know, and they said, basic, basically, if you'd be left alone to your own devices, you had the right to, didn't say they were going to guarantee happiness, but to pursuit of happiness. To pursuit of happiness. I mean, some people can pursue misery, too. But, right. Uh, but I think that's do. what we always <laughs> talk about, and it goes right to our interpretation of the GOP, which is growth, opportunity, mm -hmm. and prosperity for mm -hmm. all people. We are given, whether you were brought up with wealth or whether if you were brought up with poverty, you were given opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not always the same, but That's it is correct. there. That's correct. Now, there's, there's a term, a phrase used, the five freedoms. Can you explain to our audience uh, what the five freedoms? You mean the five in the First Amendment? Yes. yes. Or the freedom of worship, mm -hmm. to, uh, the freedom to petition the government for religious worship, uh, freedom of the press, and petition the government. Right? Did I say that? Uh, oh, assemble, the freedom and, of assembly. And yeah. speech. Now, do you agree with this statement? Adherence to the U.S. Constitution actually gives and protects our rights, while liberals and progressives believe the existence of the U.S. Constitution diminishes our rights and our freedoms. Actually, there are some people on the left who do have, or the liberal, I should say, they make that distinction, that do like the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and they do respect it. So I can't say a blanket statement, mm -hmm. but the AOC crowd, they mm -hmm. despise the Constitution. I use this expression too, um, we live in this common core era. There's no absolutes, math is whatever you feel it to be, uh, you can read something and deconstruct it. The author might, hey, this is what I'm going to convey, but you have your own, you bring your own definition. Interpretation. Yeah, it's foolishness. So in order to do that, you have to make the com Constitution Common Core compliant. Mm -hmm. That's what they're, that's what they're trying to do. Or, or rewrite it, get a new one altogether. But one of the things that's absolutely baffling to me is if we believe the Constitution does secure our liberty and our freedoms, why is it that so many, especially young people, who used to be the radicals, mm -hmm. they were out fighting for freedom. They're <clears> the <throat> ones that are so willing to turn over their well, rights. I'm 60 years of age, and I remember I was a young guy during the so-called 60s hippie mm -hmm. movement, but I remember it pretty well. And they were so anti, they hated the FBI, they hated, you know. Now, that same group of people think the FBI is just wonderful, they're, they're, they're the patriots. The CIA is a patriot organization and only because they've had so many years of leftist control of these organizations. So it is pretty interesting. Also, when you see all of the um, establishment going after Trump, you would think that the anti-establishment left would say, maybe this guy is not such a bad guy after all, you or, know? Or just the college campuses where they're shutting down the freedom of speech. If I don't <coughs> like the speaker because he doesn't speak Agree. that common core you mm -hmm. know, what it is what it is because it's what I want it to be, they will shut down speakers, well, they, the not left be has open a, to the other side. The left has a different definition of free speech. Back in the 60s, there was this free speech movement in Berkeley, California College in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about letting anyone speak. It was about using filthy and vile language in your speech. So that's their definition of free well, speech. Well, it was to challenge. It, uh, yeah. But it's still, yeah. I mean, it pushed the, the envelope. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> the right. more like, vulgar, the, the more, the, yeah. 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 But now, you know, in the same place, Berkeley, 
you know, you have conservative speakers that are going, and if they're not getting shut down by the college, they're being harassed. They're being assaulted. harassed, assaulted, you know, mm -hmm. and and abused. Well, they still support the vulgarity. Mm -hmm. That part right, they would right. still support. Yeah. But what they would not allow would be a conservative message. Now, my one of my girls goes to Liberty University, which mm -hmm. is in Lynchburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I'm driving down there next week to pick her up. She's been there uh, first year. And they do believe in free speech. They had Bernie Sanders speak there. Sure, of course. Now, I don't think University of Vermont's going to invite me to speak no. there. No. No. You know, they invited him, and he was, you know, most of the students, well, all the students not, are not on the same page, sure. but they respect. Hey, and in fact, he was um, recently AOC, was it AOC and the president of the university were in a little um, Twitter spat, mm -hmm. and she was denouncing him as all kinds of nasty stuff. And he said, he said, you not only are you dumb, but I thought, I, I, he said that you're proving you're stupid or and a liar or something like that. But I'll extend an invitation to you to speak at Liberty University mm -hmm. if you want. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. She would never reciprocate. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I I really think that AOC is just the culmination of where the next generation is she's going. a symptom of the of the problem and yeah. it's 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 pretty scary it, it really is yeah and that that this person got elected into office national office and some of the things that come out of her mouth I mean just make you want to cringe <laughs> I mean some of the stupidity that just just pours out well she does it with such Finesse. It, it's arrogant. Engaging. It's arrogance. Yes. She thinks she's the brightest star there yeah. in Congress. And she's even, she even said, "I'm the boss." You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. no, you're the dunce. I mean, <laughs> that, I mean, that's that's about as, as clear cut as. You well, can you know, it. we have a ten question quiz that we make available at our information tables, whether we're at the Cheshire Fair up in North Tahira, <coughs> at the homeschool shows, and I cha we've had politicians come by. In fact, uh, Scott Brown. Mm -hmm. came yeah. by when he was running for the Senate yeah. in New Hampshire after he had lost his yes. seat. He wouldn't take the test. He was like, nope. No. It was like a vampire looking at a crucifix or the garlic. He, uh, but we did have one guy running for, Jim Rubens, who was running for the U.S. Senate. Mm -hmm. And Jim's, uh, you know, I'm on friendly terms with Jim. He got an 80 on it, which was shocking, you know. Uh, and it was last year, I was Lynchburg, I was going to a minor league game in Lynchburg, uh, Virginia, and there was this lady, young lady passing out pamphlets. She's running for Congress. So I said, I'll have some fun with her. Now, I always have constitutions nearby. You know, usually I have some in my car or a, I little, have also. a little bag with me. I'm always <laughs> looking for opportunities, you know. Yeah. And I asked her, I said, I'm going to have a little fun with her. So I asked her, where do you find the job description of a member of Congress, House of Representatives? And she looked at me like, I don't understand what you mean. Yeah. I says, well, Online. where do you find it? Obviously, I, I, I human find it resources. Online. <laughs> well, that, that, what was, that was her answer. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I was like, so I defined, I, I said, well, where would you find the, the duties and the things you're supposed to do as a member of Congress? And she looked at me and she said, online? <laughs> I said, well, yeah. For our viewers. <laughs> and I gave her, I gave her, I came, went to the car and I gave her a copy and I said, you know, if you understood this, uh, you would be able to win your debates because I guarantee the, you know, the people you're running against have no knowledge of this. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at her pamphlet, you know, it looked like an AOC light. We're in trouble. <laughs> so why do you believe so many Democrats, liberals, progressives are so willing to give up their rights to the U.S. Constitution? Is it just to make life easier or are they just... Well, they, uh, they, have, a, they have a different worldview. They have a socialist mindset. They look at the government as benign for the most part. And it's really hard. I don't know if I can answer that mm -hmm. question completely. Mm -hmm. um, they like, it's interesting too, when certain things they like, they like to be able to kill their babies. I think there's some kind of enshrined in the Constitution. They want to smoke dope as much as they can, right? <laughs> so, so those kinds of, the That's vices. That pursuit of happiness, the, the, right? Yeah, the yeah. vices, Both of they those like are those vices. Under the pursuit of happiness. And it was interesting, you know, I, I, interesting that lots of, some states when Obamacare was passed, they wanted to nullify, which I think is a duty because every state legislator <clears throat> and the governor have to take an oath to the Constitution as well. And anything that's repugnant, they have a duty to say, we're not going to enforce it. It's not going to happen. We're going to stop it. Uh, but they were calling these people neo-Confederates because of nullification. Well, you know, there was a state of Wisconsin that nullified the fugitive slave law. Was that mm -hmm. neo-Confederate? That right. was actually before the Confederacy began. Uh, but marijuana laws, you know, again, whether you agree or not, it's against a federal law. They're nullifying a federal law. Mm -hmm. 
Well, look at look yeah. what's going on in the sanctuary cities. They're, San, they're, it's a nullis. That's, they're, thank they're you. They're nullifying yeah. federal law because it right. does, it, they they do not <coughs> want it. They don't. They want. So, who are the neo confederates? Exactly. Yeah, Article one, section eight. I think it's the second clause. Or, talks about the, um, na the Congress has the power to p laws dealing with naturalization. And they pass laws, mm -hmm. you know, and some of them they may not like. Some of them were probably, it didn't allow certain, I think it was the 1920s, they barred some, ch you know, people of, from China or from Asian. But the law was changed. And uh, yeah, uh, if, you, if you are a sovereign nation, you have to have control over your border. Every other nation in the world has border control, except they don't want us to have any. Right. Uh, I don't, you know, if, you, if I'm in C uh, Central America going into Mexico, unless it's a caravan, which they allowed in, pretty strict. In North Korea, they'll kill you. They think you're a spy. Mm -hmm. If they catch you, they're going to shoot you or put you in jail for sp uh, spying on the country. Of course, they should put you in a nut house. Who in right mind would want to sneak into North Korea? Uh, you know? Well, we see what happens. Unless you're bringing Bibles into yeah, something. Yeah, we you see know? what happens there. Or Cuba. I mean, I don't see too many people, I don't see too many Haitians uh, going to Cuba, you know, because it's, because that's a socialist country mm -hmm. and it must be better there. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a little fun with these leftists too. I'll say, wait a minute, you're telling me that Trump is a Nazi and that all these neo-Nazis are running the country, Nazis and fascists. So if that's true, why would you want all of these poor third world people coming into this neat, awful racist Nazi country? Mm -hmm. You think it would be a thing to keep them out? Well, yeah. it's correct. Yeah. It seems like the the traditional values are, are just being whittled away mm -hmm. and you know for the pursuit of um, the, the well there I think it's their ability to control the agenda the liberal ability <clears throat> to control an agenda. and that's why it shows like this is so important mm -hmm. you know in communities we actually have a lawsuit against the city of Boston uh, thankfully Liberty Council has uh, take, took the case pro bono we don't have the resources to you know for this but we wanted to raise the Christian flag on Boston City Hall Plaza, which is uh, where they have a, what I call a public access flagpole. Mm -hmm. And the case is still pending. It's in federal court. Um, they raised the rainbow flag, the transgender flag, which is a relatively new flag. Mm -hmm. They raised the flag of Communist China, which is legal under the state law, they, the, uh, Cuba and many others. But that little cross, the Christian flag I'm talking about, it's just a white with a blue field and it has the, the, red, the red Latin cross, that's it. And it doesn't represent a church, it represents Christianity, Christianity. not, not speci a specific church. It's a non-denominational mm -hmm. flag. We were going to have a little ceremony talking about Boston's rich Christian history since uh, John Winthrop said he sat on a hill and all that. And it was denied under the First Amendment. It was ironic is that... They the didn't... Wait, hold on. Yeah. They, they denied, denied it, it based, uh, on, under the First Amendment. First Amendment, right? And the email I got... The wrong kind of speech, <coughs> I guess. I guess so. Well, they so. call it government speech, too. It's really interesting. But I got the email back. <coughs> Embedded in the email is the city seal. And the city seal has a verse from... I think it's First Kings. It, of course, it's in Latin, so most people can't read it. But it says, May God favor us as He favored our forefathers. It's also on the city flag. And if you take a walk through Boston Common and Public Gardens, you're going to see lots of Christian, Christian. Uh, I mean, overt Christian, right, embedded in stone sure. here. You, sure. uh, you can't refute it. Well, that being said, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our show. It was a very quick show. I still have a lot that I I'd know, like to I talk know. about. You have to invite me back. <laughs> maybe we can, maybe we can have you back on because we have a lot more that we would want to talk about. But unfortunately. This is the end of our, our program. Hal, where can people find out very quickly about Website, Camp Constitution? Uh, CampConstitution.net. Can yeah. anyone go to Camp anyone Constitution? Anyone can go. Uh, families, whole families, unencumbered minors, and we have adults that come there as well. We have a great schedule. We have a wonderful lineup, world-renowned. We even have a British lord who loves our Constitution so much, he says if we ever lose it, there will be a dark age in the world. Well, so. we certainly agree with that, and we thank you for thank coming. You for having me. And we thank you for watching Your Right to Know and sitting in with us tonight. America, we stand for freedom. So let us all unite to yearn and strive for our republic that reflects our that preserves our rights and goes forth in power and might. That reflects our values and preserves our rights and goes forth in power.